Joining us now as our guest host for the full hour is Mario Singh, Director, Training and Education at FXPrimus.com. Uh, I know that you've never been a big fan of Japan or Japanese equities, but uh, give us your thoughts. Japan downgrading its assessment of the economy for the first time in 20 months. And also what is interesting today that is that a lot of Japanese corporations are raising their assessments, the assumed yen rates, to somewhere closer to 80. Ultimately, is this really going to be a soft patch or maybe heading back into recession? Well, Chloe, it's, it's something that traders and investors already know. The growth story in Japan, it just isn't there. And, and if we're going to backtrack for the last couple of months, what has the BOJ or the government have done? They've done three major things. They've actually intervened. They've dipped their hands in the pocket, so to speak. They've intervened for like the first time in six years. Now, that didn't happen. Didn't work. And what they've also done, if they if they put aside for about, I think, $50 billion worth of loan facilities out there, also didn't work. And they've also slashed their interest rate from 0.1% to barely zero. That also didn't work. Now, what's the main reason this is happening? Why is it that the yen is strengthening? It's purely because of the easing of the Federal Reserve. Now, this has been mentioned many, many times. So uh, the key thing for Japan to actually start moving up and weakening the yen has got to take its cue from the United States. Having said that, all the corporates are now trying to hedge a lot lower than the perceived value of 90. Right, and they're getting real ultra conservative, moving closer towards the 80, 80 handle against the U.S. dollar. And also a lot of automakers and corporations are rolling out plans to move their plants overseas to North America, Eastern Europe, or wherever labor costs are. But ultimately, is that a double whammy because you're losing jobs? Uh, elsewhere and you're just not creating productivity at home. I, I absolutely agree with that. The government intends to actually raise about 500,000 new jobs in Japan. That is something that's going to be slightly optimistic. In fact, if you look at the major MNC, Sony, for example, has come on board and told the whole world that anything below 90 for the dollar yen, they're losing like millions of dollars. So all of them are paring back their expectations. Many of them just want to get out of Japan simply because of the no growth and deflationary phase that's currently you know, we've happening. We've got the G20 finance minister's meeting lined up later this week uh, over at a South Korean city uh, this weekend. And it looks like they will be talking about FX. I mean, even with the dollar yen rates moving ever closer to the 80 handle, not many traders expecting intervention. Ultimately, uh, where do you see this panning out? I mean, it, I mean, e earlier they were intervening at around 82, 83. And it looks like the yen just keeps on strength. And it just goes to show that intervention one way just doesn't work. This is, this is something the BOJ knows, that if they were to have a, a real strong, significant move, it's got to be a coordinated in, uh, intervention, not just with themselves, but also with the Fed and the ECB. But these two countries, in particular, the developed nations of uh, the whole of Europe and, and the United States, they wouldn't want to help Japan to ease their, their uh, to sell Japanese yen because they still want to, in, in their own sense, weaken their own currencies for economic stimulus. So that's going to be a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's something that everyone is watching the upcoming G20 meetings. That's where the whole headlines of currency wars is all coming out right now. Mario, I wonder whether in some ways, maybe the beginning of next year, this problem will work itself out in the sense that the dollar might stop weakening. Obviously, it's, it's struggling against the euro. The euro is struggling to maintain anything above 140. Capital economics thinks that, you know, soon we might start seeing the dollar going up in value against the yen and the euro. How far away are we from a turn in fortune? Hi, Ross. I, I really don't see that happening at least until the late of next year. So we're looking at something literally about nine months down the road. And the main reason for that is that come the FOMC meeting that's going to be happening on the first week of November, I think on the second, uh, second of November, second or the third of November, Ben Bernanke will probably announce to the whole world something that is already being priced in, in the markets, and that is when they will outright come out and increase the balance sheet of purchasing more assets. So when yeah, they do that... Mary, you just made the point. The US it's yields priced lower. in. Mario, you just made the point. It's already priced in. Well, it is at the point of time, but because of a long-term effect, it is going to have the U.S. yields drive down a lot lower. So I still see the dollar yen heading lower. Everyone is still in a sell dollar mode. Okay, Mario, good to have you on the show. You're going to do this uh, for the next hour. Mario Singh from FXPrimus.com.